Hey guys, welcome back to the Inside of George Lopez. I'm your host, George Lopez. If I've said it once, I've said it a million times. 2001 was a great year to be eight. The first Kids Bop was released, there was no global pandemic, and director Robert Rodriguez shocked the world when he released his movie, Spy Kids. Up until that point, he was known pretty much exclusively for producing extremely violent crime movies. So when he came out with this colorful, family-friendly action movie about children saving the world from a bunch of fingers, I think people were a little surprised. Even more surprising, though, it was a massive hit. Personally, I loved that movie when it came out. I loved that all the adults were dumb and the kids were smart and they got to use a bunch of cool gadgets that I wished were real. That was 100% my childhood fantasy, was to be a spy instead of the lame-ass dork I actually was. Anyway, after the success of the first one, it was time to turn Spy Kids into a franchise. One year later, Spy Kids 2 came out, and it was a pretty good sequel. Steve Buscemi's here now, so that's cool. Another year later, Spy Kids 3D came out, and that's when things started to go off the rails. In 2003, 3D was a super gimmicky and always underwhelming addition to movies. It really just meant the tickets would be more expensive and the characters would lean towards the camera a lot. Whoa! So after three movies in three years, it was time for a new approach to the Spy Kids cinematic universe. And in 2005, Robert Rodriguez would strike gold with the release of Shark Boy and Lava Girl, which truly might be the greatest bad movie ever made. Mr. Electric, send him to the principal's office and have him expelled! Somehow, with four more years of technological advancements and a significantly higher budget, Robert Rodriguez managed to make a movie that looked worse than the first Spy Kids. I can only assume all of that extra money went solely to paying George Lopez, who plays a teacher, a villain, and a human computer all at once. That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. The rest of the cast is pretty bad all around. The titular Lava Girl is played by Taylor Dooley, who you may know from this movie and only this movie. Future werewolf Taylor Lautner plays a brooding shark boy who may have a bad temper, but still has a few tricks up his sleeve. It's working. Keep it up, shark boy. <laughs> Just relax, lay about, or my fist will put you out. Dream, 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 dream. Take your time, but beware, there's darkness in the air. I think what really sets the tone for this movie is the quote they show right before the opening credits. Oh, interesting. Was that like Steve Jobs or Copernicus? No, Lava Girl said that. Remember? Remember when Lava Girl said that? I'm not going to go too in-depth here because plenty of people already have on this website. But I will say that every time you think the plot is starting to make sense, it takes an insane left turn you couldn't have possibly seen coming. They're singing at a frequency! I highly trained your spy! Where's Lava Girl? It's up to you now, Max. <laughs> and no matter what it is, it always looks terrible. I cannot stress enough to you that this is the ugliest movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Some of the visuals are so hideous it's actually disturbing. And on top of that, whenever one of the characters needs to move the story along, they do so by simply falling asleep. Go to sleep. So most of the time they're either sleeping or screaming at each other. How about a knuckle sandwich? Max is a good boy. He ruined my dream journal! I'm a girl that behind you! Uh and I think the director must have told Taylor Dooley at some point that if she stops smiling for even one second, she'll get fired. Dream, dream. Not much else to see here. Let's go ahead and just skip to the end. Bye. I don't! You're my best friend! Ah! Holy shit. I can't believe people didn't like this. I'm not going anywhere. Ah! Considering that Shark Boy and Lava Girl is a terrible movie from 15 years ago that almost everybody hated, it was really only a matter of time until Netflix used their infinite supply of money to fund a sequel. And that's what they did. We Can Be Heroes is the name of this movie. It does not star Taylor Lautner, but it does have Yaya Goslin, who you may recognize from being on the FBI's most wanted list. It's really disappointing that they let her act in this movie instead of just arresting her on the spot, but no one listens to me. Thankfully, the other Taylor does come back to reprise her beloved role as Lava Girl. I gotta say, this actress has not had the best luck throughout her career. She's only been in a handful of movies, and believe it or not, according to IMDb ratings, the best one 
is this movie. So I think we're in for a treat. Basically, We Can Be Heroes is Shark Boy and Lava Girl for the new generation. Hit me. Sorry, not sorry. It's like Spy Kids with a bit of a modern twist. Just a quick selfie for my socials while I stop this thing. <laughs> I do that too. Shark Boy and Lava Girl are all grown up now, so naturally they're married and have a kid. My mommy is Lava Girl, but my dad is Shark Boy. Am I crazy for thinking that maybe it's time to start calling him Shark Man? At this point, it just seems a little degrading to be like, oh hey, there goes Shark Boy. I just turned 30. The premise of this movie is actually pretty funny. All of these kids are children of the heroes. So they all have like weird underdeveloped offshoot of their parents' superpowers. Like this kid's dad is super fast, but he's super slow. This one girl can just sing really well. That's cool. And this kid makes funny faces. I can even change my face to look like you. But then disaster strikes while they're all locked inside Spy Kids headquarters where they have to watch their parents get taken down by aliens on TV. It's pretty emotional. Um, I actually cried for about 20 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, the heroics have fallen. I hope the news studio gives their graphic designer a raise. He made that entire logo in like three seconds. We're getting word that the president would like to address the nation. People of America. Bing, bing, bong. Hold on, I'm like 99% sure that that guy was also president in the Spy Kids movies, which means he's been in power for like 19 years? Is the Spy Kids president a dictator? This movie's dystopian as hell. Bad. It's hopelessly bad. How did this guy ever get to be president? He can't even put two sentences together. Nice, I see what they did there. Political commentary always hits the hardest in children's movies. So don't ask us how we know this, but Aliens are about to attack, and we're no longer safe here. This place is a fortress. Nothing's getting in. And I'm afraid no one's getting out either. Sorry, kids, but you can't leave this room. It's too dangerous out there. And if we gotta kick your ass to keep you safe, then that's what we're gonna do. Oh, oh no! She's got shark strength! You know that thing in video games when an NPC is following you around and they get stuck on like a wall or something, but then you turn the camera and they've teleported right next to you? That's what this character does. Because I looked and he is nowhere to be found during all of these chase scenes and then the doors to the train close and there he is. Never should have come here. Why don't you cheer us up by singing one of those little songs you sing so well, Shark Boy? Dream, dream, dream. Hey, hey, hey. Calm down, Shark Boy. Do these two not have regular names? Imagine not only being married to Shark Boy, but you also have to call him Shark Boy. Can you just go by, like, Steve? Shark Strength! I like how super early on in the movie they realize that this one girl can draw the future and they can use that to get out of whatever predicament they're in. But then, every time they get stuck, they still have to have that same epiphany. Wow, that's really smart. Oh, drew us a clue. Oh, I got it. We should just look at her drawing. That's a great idea, and a brand new one too. But make sure we forget about this so there's still tension next time. I need a pair of pliers and a heat source. My teeth are strong because my dad's a shark. You don't have to explain that every time. We understand the genetics. And I have a fin on my back because my dad is shark. Oh my God, we get it. Gotta be quick, guys, all the tears. Little Miss Guppy, you just saved us. Ah, it melted. Can you make another one? I didn't get over here fast enough. Shocking twist, the one girl turns out to be evil. Oh, it was an alien spy? So then she starts drawing monsters to kill them with. <laughs> Hey, what if instead of fighting the monsters every time, you know, the ones she's bringing to life with her iPad, we just take her iPad? Not so fast. See, this wouldn't have happened if you had just taken the iPad. Why am I not in charge? These kids are kind of dumb. Oh, we can be heroes just for one. 
That's the name of the movie. Okay, big spoiler alert here, which I'm sure you care about if you're watching this, but the big twist at the end of the movie was that a lot of these people are actually aliens, including the president. He's just like a a lizard monster. But then after the kids save the day by literally one second, because it's a movie, all of the aliens are like, surprise, we're actually good. This was all a test and there were actually no stakes because we always knew that you would do it. So basically the whole movie leads up to the bad guys being like, just kidding. And that's awesome. As we each head off to face the challenges of the universe, can we count on you to not just help save your planet, but the entire galaxy? Hell no. We can be. So if I'm being 100% honest, this movie is not terrible. It would be really easy for me to do the cynical thing where I'm like, uh, the garbage store called they want their trash back. But it really wasn't as bad as I expected it to be. And I think it would be disingenuous for me to be like, well, Spy Kids is good because I saw it when I was a kid. And this movie sucks because I was 27 when I watched it. I think this has just as much charm and fun action as the original Spy Kids, as long as you're within the target demographic. Maybe this is just me, but I think a lot of people my age come to expect more out of movies like this, specifically because of what Pixar has done. I was the perfect age to enjoy Monsters, Inc. when that movie came out. And then when I was old enough to go to college, but accidentally chose not to, they released Monsters University, a movie about college. I also grew up loving Toy Story 1 and 2, and then the third one comes out when I'm nearing the end of high school, and it's a movie about moving on from your childhood, which is what I was trying to do. In recent years, they've started coming out with these brilliantly conceptualized movies about the spectrum of human emotion and what it means to be alive, literally the meaning of life. These super heady concepts that actually make you engaged and feel something as an adult while still being animated well enough to hold the attention of a child. And I feel like no matter what movie Pixar releases, besides Cars 2, I've always been a member of the film's target audience. We Can Be Heroes is not like that. And that's okay. It's a movie made for kids, featuring a bunch of characters that no well-adjusted child should have any business knowing about. And if you go into it expecting it to be anything more than that, you're gonna be seriously disappointed. I give Shark Boy and Lava Girl 2 Three Shark Boys and Lava Girls out of five. Well, I had a lot of fun, but our date's almost over now. So let me make sure we did everything. Looks like I can cross movie off the list. <gasps> I forgot about dinner. Good thing this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Hi, can you smell that? I'm making dinner. All right, I'll just cut to the chase. I've been using HelloFresh for over two years now and my wife and I love it. Every week we go on the app, we pick which three meals we want out of a bunch to choose from, and then it comes to our door in a box. And then we eat the box. I'll say it, I've never been a great chef. Before HelloFresh, my signature meal was eating chips. But this is so foolproof that even a dummy like me can breeze through dinner in about 30 minutes and impress my wife in the process. HelloFresh also makes my trips to the grocery store quicker because I know I already have three meals waiting for me at home and I can just get in, fuel my LaCroix addiction, and then get out before they even knew I was there. We end up saving money too because the last time I tried making a random recipe I found online, we spent like $40 on various cheeses and then I cooked it too long and it tasted like crap. But with these recipe cards, you'd have to go out of your way in order to mess something up. It's so easy a dog could do it. Dogs would not be allowed to cook. So if one of your New Year's resolutions was to order in less and cook more, Try HelloFresh, I think you'll love it. The veggie meals are always great. We're not even vegetarians, but those are typically the ones we choose because they always look the most interesting. But they also offer low calorie or low carb options. They have pescatarian meals. You can even throw in fun extras like quick lunches, garlic bread, even cookies. But I will warn you, it says here, if you do make cookies, you have to send one of them to me. That's kind of weird, but I don't make the rules. So if you've been looking to try out HelloFresh, now's your chance because I've got a deal for you. Go to HelloFresh.com and use the code 10 I'm a little stinker when you're signing up to get 10 free meals, including free shipping on your first four boxes. That's 10 free meals across your first four boxes as long as you use my promo code, which is on the screen. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Happy eating, everyone.